things. So we begin with the end of chapter 42. Chapter 42, speaking about Yira, the concept of fear slash um, awesome. Well, no, not yet. We'll get there. What awesome means. Um, speaking about fear, what does it mean? The presence of God that is not just a cerebral thing, but something that we can meditate and think about our connection to God, God's greatness, that will change our behavior. And that's the goal with this. The goal is not the experience as much as it is what the experience will bring to us. That we'll have a presence, a sense of presence. And as we've mentioned many times, we all know that when someone else is in the, in, in the room, that presence makes a difference, knowing that they're seeing us. The very fact that someone is seeing us, we act differently. So God sees us, we act differently, more appropriately. That is, in very brief, the concept that we've discussed till now. Now the Elder actually takes this idea, interestingly, and says, well, you know, if God is seeing us, that means we should be seeing him. Hmm right so it's not just that god is seeing us but that we should be seeing him if we were to take the you know to well take the analogy the altar that says the analogy is when the king sees you you're seeing the king at the same time so the fear of god right which means not fear of punishment just the presence of that, therefore we act differently. That's the point over here, not the fear of punishment, but the fear of the presence should lead us also to be able to have a fear of him because we are perceiving him. Not only he's perceiving us. Um, now, what does that mean exactly? How do we understand that? So, um, for example, you know, if there's a hidden camera in the room, you know there's a camera, so you're being viewed. Of course, that's going to change somewhat your behavior. But if the camera is right in front of you, right, and you see it, like I have the camera right in front of me over here, and I see it, um, I'm seeing the, ca you know, I'm seeing the guy filming me. I'm seeing the person who's filming me. Not only is it, uh, you know, the, I'm being perceived, but I'm perceiving. That actually brings you even to a greater sense of fear. And what do we mean fear? Again, not fear of punishment, but let's let's understand. Well, let's take this, the analogy. The analogy is of a king. That's the metaphor that the Altadebi uses. Why do we fear the king? Because of their physical reality? No. We don't fear 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 them because of the physical body, but because of the vitality that is in the body. Meaning when the um, when the king is sleeping, we don't have the same fear in front of the king. Now we might have fear of waking up the king because then the vitality of the king will be will be there, right? So do we see vitality in a person, let alone a king? Absolutely not, right? We only see it in our mind's eye. The physical of the king we see, but that's what we fear, the physical reality of the king or the vitality, right? Which is, you know, the inner essence of the person. That's, that's in a concealed state. We don't see that. Again, only in our mind's eye we see that. Now, you might say, well, but at least I see the body of the king. And because I see the body of the king, I know for certain there's vitality to the king, even though he might be sleeping right now. I see the movement, you know, <laughs> he's not dead. Uh, because if the king was dead, obviously, you're not, you're not going to have fear, right? Fear of his kingship. So this is what the Altarebbe says. 
when we, when God is seeing us, we also have an opportunity to see him. Now, what does that mean? What are we seeing? We're seeing a physical world. But that physical world, for the sake of the metaphor further, is like garments that the king is wearing. Just as garments cover over the person and conceal their, you know, conceal them. So likewise, the physical world, the stars, the sun, the moon, the, the galaxies. I tried this morning, 5.30 in the morning, we were supposed to be able to see here Jupiter and Saturn. I went out and it was too cloudy, couldn't see. <laughs> Perfect day for that, because that's what we're discussing over here. So just as the soul fills the body, likewise, God, and gives vitality to the body, right? Likewise, God fills the physical reality of everything and is, and is its vitality. So what it means is God is just enclosed in there. It's concealed. It's hidden. But the true reality is it's God's vitality. So when I'm gazing the heavens above, or you know at the grand canyon or whatever it is really what i'm seeing is materiality that is concealing hiding on the vitality of god that is present there <laughs> you know the story of um back in uh stalinist russia so uh they wanted to eradicate any notion of their religion any notion notion of god so the teacher gets up and says students does anybody see God? No. Anybody smell God? Touch God? Hear God? Taste God? Well, I guess there must be no God, the teacher concluded for the uh, students. So little uh, Isaac at the back of the room puts up his hand. He says, teacher, may I ask, please? Sure. Students, does anybody see the teacher's brains the student said no yeah anybody smell taste hear touch i guess the teacher has no brains <laughs> i once told that to a person you know um, who was uh, for bringing with him i told him he says well just take a baseball bat and break open the head and you'll see the brains you won't see brains I mean, you'll see brains, but you won't see an intelligence. All you see is a piece of meat, you know, two, three pounds of, of meat. That's what you see, right? So what is the point over here? The point is that in our mind's eye, we know that in the brain, the physical reality of the brain, there is, you know, the, uh, there is intelligence. We know that in the physical reality of a person, there is a vitality that animates them and gives them life, the soul, right? We know that. So what the Alta Rebbe says is, the truth is it's the same thing in the physical world. It may be a little more removed and we're not as, uh, as accustomed to it, but the truth is the physical world isn't a, it's, it's a piece of flesh. Where is its, its vitality coming from? Obviously, it's only coming from God that's animating it. So, the essential thing the Alter Rebbe says is that we have to train ourselves, that our eyes have to be different eyes, that when we look at the physical world, we have to be able to work on ourselves, to habituate ourselves, that the eye that sees is not physical reality only, but recognizing that the physical reality is only the outer garment, just like I wear garments, we all wear garments, but there's a true inner essence, and that is God that animates it. And therefore, we can constantly be seeing the presence of God. Not only God is seeing me, but in a certain way even greater, I am also seeing him constantly um, as I see nature around me, the world around me. Um, interesting that Ebbe, just uh, as an aside, that Ebbe spoke about, seeing the world, how it's evolving. And everything in the world is really evolving to its ultimate purpose of Mashiach. We need to have a different set of eyes. We can't just have the eyes of just, you know, the five senses, or, or, or we can't just live, we don't live, we don't live our life based on five senses. 
we live our life in the mind's eye per, of a perception of something that the physical eye does not see right a soul we don't see but we believe that it's there so we know the vitality of the king is absolutely you know what makes the king the king not the physical flesh so likewise when we perceive a physical world around us we have to habituate ourselves to be able to recognize that that's only a garment that's hiding on the tr and concealing the true reality of what the presence of God and that's what I'm seeing in my mind's eye now with this the Altair says something very interesting um, that this is what's called faith in Judaism faith comes from the uh, Hebrew word emuna emuna um, comes from the word oimen a crafts a craftsman what is a craftsman um, someone who has a talent and because they um, train let's say their hands in a particular craft right um, a shoemaker a, a painter a sculptor they have a craft they have an inborn talent and that inborn talent though if you don't train yourself you'll never be proficient in that craft. So an oimen means the, 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 the training of the, uh, of the craft, the, the um, skill that we have. So what is the skill that we all have? Is that we can see the presence of God. Not only is God seeing me, and therefore that should shape my behavior, that I should act differently, but here's even something greater. I perceive him, him, her of God is the Shrina. So, but uh, him is the active, active creator. We perceive God in everything, or oh, in everything. We, we, that's what we try to habituate ourselves. That it, this is uh, not merely the physicality of what it is. There is the vitality behind it. It's concealed. It's clothed. Now it's you know it's a little more removed and more concealed than the fact when you look at a king or you look at any human being you know um, and, and you see a body. We know a body has a soul to it that gives it vitality. So that we're absolutely certain of. So that's easier to accept. This is yes yeah, a little more difficult. But it is our faith, meaning we have a talent for this, meaning that since we have a piece of God in us, and when we're attuned to that piece of God within me, then I can then take that talent that I have of perce a perception of God, right, in my mind's eye, and be able now to perceive it in the physical world, whether it's the stars above, whether it's a beautiful garden, whether it's the Grand Canyon, whatever it is there's so many different ways that we can actually perceive that presence of god um which is phenomenal an amazing idea to conclude this chapter the altar says well the bottom line of fear though is accepting the yoke of heaven god is king he's your king and you're here to serve you appoint him as your king and that you don't rebel against the king that's the bottom line that can always be accessed in other words i may not always be able to access the fact that i can meditate upon god's greatness and um, have a sense of presence that he sees me right i may not be able to always access the capability of perceiving a physical reality around me that is um, greater than just the physical reality, but is truly God animating and God is present and I can now perceive the presence of God. Not that he's seeing just me, but I'm perceiving him in the, the world around me. I don't mean just here in the divine presence, uh, the divine hashkacha uh, uh, of, uh, of how God anim uh, you know, brings things and makes things happen but in the physical reality, that the physical reality is only in clothing, concealing, garments that conceal on God's presence. 
And then in my mind's eye, that's what I perceive. Not always will I be able to do that. But one thing we can always do, and this is the, the bottom line and the uh, conclusion of this chapter, is that I can um, always have the yoke of heaven upon me, recognizing that God is my king and I am here to serve and um, that I accept to do whatever it is that he needs from me, whatever it is um, that I am ready to fulfill, period. And this is something that we can all um, access at any moment, recognizing that I'm not here to be served, I'm here to, to serve. I'm not here um, for my own, you know, for my own uh, self-aggrandizement, whether it's in, you know, any form of uh, self-serving ways, but I'm here as a servant of the King to serve whatever God needs from me. And to do that in actual thought, speech, and action is something that we can access at any time. That is the conclusion of uh, the 42nd chapter. I know now that, if you can um, share that with me, that's great. Uh, and if you have any questions or any comments, let me just read from Linda. I know now that we have to recognize that that which I see with my mind's eye to perceive the presence of God in the world around me. Excellent. Beautiful. Um, again, if you have any questions, put two question marks first and then ask the question. Anybody on uh, in Clubhouse has a question or a comment, wants to share, please do. Um, Denise asks, how can we see the Shekhinah now that the world uh, and in the, in the world to come? So we're not talking about the Shekhinah here. We're not talking about the divine presence of God in the Shri, in the form of the Shekhinah. Um, that was like in the Holy Temple, last week's Parsha in Shemini that we, uh, the, the Torah portion spoke about. So we're not talking about uh, about that. We're talking about God as the creator, the vitality of God in the physical reality of this world that he is animating. That That's that's the, the idea. So that's not the Shekhinah. The Shekhinah... Hmm. I get, the Shekhinah would not be clothed. That's the difference. The physical world is clothed, meaning what is clothing is concealing. It's hiding on the presence of God. Um, Shekhinah doesn't hide. So when we're studying Torah right now, there's no hiddenness in the fact that it, this is God's divine wisdom and that we are connected to him. I mean, we're not experiencing it, but there is no hiddenness to that. No, that's more the Shekhinah. Um, Tim, I am seeing and hearing Rabbi Fine on my iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, and um, we should. Yeah, th that's easy to see, right? Um, so, in the world to come, in times of Mashiach, how we will see. So, won't, the difference will be in the times of Mashiach, we won't see in the mind's eye. We'll see with the physical eye, and the physical eye will remain physical, and we'll see the presence of God. It's animating. Will be completely revealed to us. We won't have to second guess it. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Any other questions? Any other comments? Uh, go ahead, Can Vilma. I ask, sure. Hi. Hello, so Vilma. I caught the last part of you saying that the world is evolving to its ultimate purpose. Is that something that the Rebbe said that we are to be aware of? Thank you for that question. Well, I, I mean, this is, you know, fundamentals of, of, of Judaism is, you know, Mashiach, that the world is evolving, you know, that because there is purpose and God in his infinite goodness um, is gave a master plan that everything that we're doing, as we learned actually in chapter 37 of uh, Tanya, the, the author says that all of our actions and all of our divine service throughout the time of exile is uh, bringing to the final redemption to the times of Mashiach and then that's when the presence of God will be so palpable and real 
will not be hidden, not be concealed. Now we can have an understanding in the mind's eye, but not in the physical eye, there will, isn't a perception. Um, but then there will be the physical eye will perceive that divine truth. Um, yes, so, yeah, and that's what we're evolving towards. And what the Rebbe, what the Rebbe did add is that we should open up our eyes and to be able to see how the world indeed is evolving towards Mashiach. By the way, that's a course that I'm going to be giving in uh, two weeks' time. And whoever is interested in the JLI course, um, I'm going to put up the information about that, that you can um, actually, um, I can do that while we get some other um, questions and comments. So I could put it up. Um, um, but yes, that's where we're evolving to, and we're going to learn more about that uh, soon. Any other questions or comments? Sir, sir. The Reed said that we can have an awareness of that evolving nature of the world. Yes. And your, your class is something that is interesting to me because, you know, to know about that, like, there's much to know about that. Right. Absolutely. By the way, I just, oops, mistake there. <laughs> um, okay. I just put up a link on Facebook. Um, I can't do that on Instagram right now. And you can't do that on Clubhouse. But uh, if, you, if you go to ChabadZichron.com, then you can uh, find there for that course um, that's coming up, which uh, invite everybody. Okay, anybody, um, let me see. I know now that because we're going to go now to the second part. Uh, Daniel, how can the blind see unless the eyes are open? So it's in the spirit. Um, well, hopefully we're not blind um, in spirit. <laughs> and um, I, I, you mean the physical, physical blindness? Is that what you're saying? I'm not, I'm not clear what you mean to say there, Daniel. How can the blind see unless the eye, uh, the eyes are open? Well. God willing, their eyes should be open. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm not clear what you mean by that. Okay, that is the end of chapter 42.